blame them. Let's see the percentage of children under five who are stunted in ASEAN member states. Let's see here. The biggest one is in Laos. And the is still high. Number two from the lowest. <laughs> from the highest, the bad thing. 37.2% exactly. And it is why we can't imagine in the recent national team, football, football uh, national team of Indonesia, what they win uh, football game even in ASEAN. Yeah? Because our posture lost yeah? compared with uh, other ASEAN countries. Like if compared with ASEAN uh, with from European or Western uh, player, so like David and Julian. Yeah. <laughs> and what is the prevalence of wasting in children under in ASEAN member states? Still, Indonesia is still number one. Yeah. 12%. Yeah. And then Cambodia. Thailand is good, only 7%. Yeah. Not really good. Another little bit. And we still have micronutrient deficiency, anemia. Yeah. So the prevalence of anemia in children, 6 to 59 months. Yeah. Let's see here. Cambodia. Yeah. Indonesia. Uh, under Laos and Myanmar and Philippines. They are in the middle. Thailand is uh, much better. Yeah. Let's see in Indonesia. Yeah. This is uh, the feature of uh, under notice uh, children. Yeah. Uh, this is twin. Let's see. Uh, they have to struggle to achieve the healthy weight according to the age. And this is the prevalence. Yeah. There, there's a trend uh, increase. Yeah. Decrease, uh, yeah, increase from to, uh, 36 in 2010 to 37.2 in 2013. For stunted. For underweight, also a little bit increase. Yeah. And this is, uh, we compare uh, between separate wasting and separate stunting. For children, based on weight age and height age, we can see here. Yeah, still the problem, problem in Indonesia. Yeah. So let's see the data. This data, Indonesia is one of 47 countries among 122 countries in the list that suffers from both stunting in children and anemia in women productive uh, age. Yeah. So there are about 22.7% of WPR are anemic. We still also uh, facing with uh, low energy consumption. There are about 54.5 uh, uh, adolescents that their energy consume less than 70%. Among children under 5, still high, 24.4%. These children under five needs more energy actually yeah, for their growth. And this is the, uh, some uh, products, yeah, uh, process and also formula milk set in local store that uh, frequently used by, by our children. And this food contribute to nutrition deficiencies because. Actually, if we, we, we check the, the composition, maybe not fit with the requirement. Let's see Thailand. Child testing increased from 5% to 7%. Yeah, little, yeah. But still lower among ASEAN countries. And the level of child testing is similar in rich and poor families. There is no differences among uh, families, rich or poor. It means the education, the Dutch education level is the same. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe the rich people, the rich people uh, uh, rely on uh, the what we call house or maid, something to for uh, to the uh, uh, requirement of their children. Cambodia, 
the countries that lost the highest percentage of their GDP to malnutrition is Cambodia and Laos. Yeah? Laos and uh, PDA has the highest problem of stunting children among ASEAN countries, 44%. One of us, let me, really bad thing. Yeah? And 49% children in rural areas are stunted compared to 27% uh, in urban areas. Yeah? And stunting is linked to poverty. In most apparent in the lowest quintile. So in Cambodia, 42% of children in the lowest quintile are stunted compared to 90% in the highest quintile. How about overnutrition in ASEAN? Overnutrition is overweight or obesity and micronutrient excess. Let's see. Now I think not just in ASEAN, worldwide. There are trend of low obesity yeah, we call, because obesity in global, yeah, we call global city. Yeah. So there's increasing prevalence of, of people worldwide. For example, in 2005, there was only, not only, yeah, this is big, 1.6 billion operated adults and 400 million among them were obese. This problem for the uh, uh, airline, airline company, yeah? Because he will take one and a half seat for uh, other, other, other people, basically. Even in the US, uh, one company in the US, like uh, West, uh, what the US? They, they, they tried, uh, they, they have uh, planning to charge obese people to have to buy two tickets for one people, <laughs> for example. And WHO predicted there would be 2.3 billion overweight adults and 700 million among them are obese in 2015. Input in ASEAN countries. Let's see in Indonesia. Yeah. See, Indonesia is one of 17 countries among 170 countries in the list that has all three problems. Stunting, wasting, and overweight. Now 19, 11.9%. Uh, Average uh, overweight. Yeah. So more people are overweight and obese in this side and increase. See? This is for uh, as a adult, yeah, for, for adult, female and male. See? A female more higher than male. So which one is you? Here, the stories. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, stories. High risk, you can, even you can also uh, check your theory. <laughs> or you can check by uh, doing a uh, GG Julie test, yeah? like this. How, how long you can stay stable? Yeah? Actually, if you are always overweight, uh, maybe less uh, than 10 uh, seconds for this. This is the national data of abdominal obesity yeah. based on base circumference. Although there is a joke now in my country that from the survey, 75% of beauty girls will choose overweight male. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and 90% gays will choose the sick pack uh, male. <laughs> so which one do you like? <laughs> the sick pack or the obvious or sorry. How about Thailand? Thailand child overweight increased from 8% to 11%. Yeah, almost like Indonesia. And overweight is still more common among the richest families in Thailand. 15% in the richest quite compared to net percent in the poorest world. Uh, what is the effect and causes of malnutrition? There are many effects, uh, many factors influencing the uh, malnutrition. We can uh, uh, divide into immediate causes, underlying causes, and basic causes. Yeah? Immediate, of course, because inadequate dietary intake and disease. Yeah? Underlying causes, also security, inadequate care, and practices, unhealthy household environment and integrated health uh, services. 
is to say this is for under condition, yeah. But the basic causes is uh, household access to adequate quantity and quality of resources, yeah, land, education, employment, capital, to poverty, yeah, to poverty. So I, 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 this why the uh, the deal of economy here because the related with economy, <laughs> yeah. And in the in adequate financial, human, physical, and social capital, and of course, social, cultural, economic, and political context. Because how to overcome the malnutrition depends on the political will of our government. How to allocate the budget? Let's see the impact of malnutrition economy. For example, here child malnutrition. Of course, we reduce parent productivity. Parents have to take care, bring them to the hospital, spend money, etc., and creates a burden on the healthcare system and lead to non communicable diseases, disability, and even death. And of course, reducing the potential uh, cost. For example, in Indonesia, the economic cost of non communicable disease around 248 million. US dollar per year. Yeah, Indonesia. Indonesia. It's big, big amount. And about child stunting and testing. Despite of increased economic growth, yeah, the child stunting and investing are still a big issue. Yeah. The contributing factor of property, there are still traditional diets that lack nutritious food. Like in my country, just rice. And salt uh, and uh, krupuk yeah, like that. So how can they meet the uh, protein requirement? And also poor infant infant feeding practices. For example, they have they got like the uh, 1980s. They got the uh, there's a weaning food program for children under five. The government distributed uh, supplementary food. But uh, they forget to teach about food safety education, how to prepare. So at first, the aim is to reduce the uh, dire incidence and to reduce malnutrition. But what happened after introducing the, this food? The incidence of uh, malnutrition and dire is increased because the, the mother don't know and the mother and housemaid don't know how to prepare. Just put water. They don't know that. Uh, they don't understand that the water they put should uh, cook, should boil, and they should uh, uh, use clean uh, plates something like that. This is what uh, they, our government forget at the time. Yeah. So food safety is very important in this. Sense. Even one expert from Switzerland. Uh, doctor, maybe you know Doctor uh, Yasmin Montajermi. Yeah, he she suggested that uh, mother should be trained hasap hazard analysis to control COVID. Really, mother also for mother like that. So inadequate clean water and sanitation and farming a limited variety of crops. Yeah. Overweight, how about overweight and underdeveloped houses of overweight and underdeveloped are interwined. This is a uh, interesting uh, result. Uh, result. Yeah. The standard growth in early childhood will have this of becoming overweight later in life. If the baby is underweight, standing, but when they are growing, they become overweight. Okay. So such an impact development in other areas. Yeah. And AG health and education and long term impact in life. And also increase access to junk food and drinks, yeah. high trans fat, high sugar content, low nutritional value, and physical activity, yeah. and sedentary lifestyle. It, uh, they will have higher risk for being overweight yeah. and strength based on our research. Our research is yes, also in my country. This is an example of the causes and effect of the double burden of malnutrition across the life cost of an individual. So I think this is, uh, you can uh, see right there. Yeah. But what I would like is 
uh, what is the relation between safety and malnutrition? This is important, I think, yeah? because sometimes important. Even in nutritional program study, uh, they don't teach food safety to the student. But in the road declaration 92, access to nutritionally safe and adequate food is the right of every individual. What's that? Relationship. Yeah, like this. This is just an example. The relation to safety and malnutrition. So, if the children very often exposed to unsafe food, will affect the malnutrition. Through four uh, ways. Put in thick piece, put in thick. Uh, this group absorption. This group metabolism and even direct cause. So, this is what I uh, told before. Yeah, we need food depend on the energy condition are very heavily contaminated. So that's the point. And also, also don't forget about pesticide resin. I think since the revolution, well, most well, country used pesticide. At the time, people said that as far we follow the good agricultural practices, the food will save. The residue will below maximum residue level. But what happened 30 years after the revolution? Many stunting people, children, many new emerging diseases. Even they must politicization. From one uh, several report, there are uh, some uh, pesticide anti androgenic pesticide will cause the mass politicization. So it is why maybe in worldwide now there are a lot men whose appetite <laughs> I mean they like the same sex already because this one. And we know that pesticide are adopting disrupting chemical or steroid disrupting chemical and will, this will cause hypotonism. And the effect of hypotonism is stunting and disrupting in talent intelligence. And basic health research data in Indonesia in 2010 and 2013 indicated standard in Indonesia standard in Indonesia that increased from 35.6 to 37.6. And it is why I told many times to official in Indonesia, our team will not win on football game if we don't care about the nutrition, what is standing. Because the children, our posture is, you know, other world uh, class uh, player. <laughs> so this is uh, the last bit about the. Uh, uh, program to uh, alleviate. Yeah. I think many government already uh, follow UNICEF recommendation to alleviate the malnutrition yeah. for its uh, causes yeah. and empower with knowledge for uh, regarding the food safety. Yeah. And in Indonesia, we have several program include uh, community infant and young child feeding counseling and care. And also, uh, we have Posyandu, uh, integrated uh, service yeah, for uh, children arbaid. And also, this is uh, we have what we call the first uh, thousand life uh, day life program. It put uh, the scaling up nutrition movement. Yeah. Yeah. And also, there are uh, case transfer programs to protect poor families to buy uh, food, of course distributing multi-micronutrient sprinkle, we call Taburia, but now under review. And since uh, this year, our government uh, launched a PROGAS, nutritional program for school children, but still pilot uh, in a uh, province of East Pusat Negara by providing breakfast and nutrition education and character education. In Thailand, they have also 
success story in reducing unnecessary and procedure using strategic framework for food management in Thailand. Yeah. And also there are uh, like uh, South Island decision. In Vietnam, uh, strengthening maternity protection in the international court, extension of maternity leave from four to six months. Yeah. In Indonesia, still three months. Yeah. And advertising ban on breast milk substitute for infant up to 24 months. Yeah. In Laos, introduction of home fortification with multiple micro-tentin folders, except in my country, yeah. in the frame of infant and young child feeding intervention. And also breastfeeding in Laos, yeah, reaching every mother and child. In Philippines, the eggs help feed malnourished children. They are using local uh, source. And also, uh, maternity protection. Yeah. So, according to expanding maternity leave bill, 100 days paid maternity leave applies to all female workers in the government and private sector, regardless of the method of delivery. It also allows for an additional 30 days sleep without pay. So 100 days with no pay and 30 days sleep without pay. And also they are providing its patient station in every public uh, area. And also management of testing in the Philippines resident from disaster and emergencies from practice policy. They try to manage for this to protect the uh, child malnutrition. Similar thing in Brunei Darussalam. In Cambodia, they have also uh, complementary feeding practices. In Malaysia, in Malaysia they are more obese, yeah? so they are they have program managing obesity in Malaysia. Yeah? So Myanmar, similar thing. I think anything else we need regarding how to. Uh, uh, overcome the problem in Malaysia. Of course, we need data. We need data. For example, if you would like to uh, measure the nutrition advocacy from the consumption, we need uh, put that uh, put uh, composition tables. Among ASEAN countries, most of data in ASEAN is old, never updated. Even in my country, we use uh, 10 or 15 years that Meanwhile, there are new innovation, new product development. So we need to collaborate yeah, to update the input from the database and also how to reduce the consumption, pay more attention to food safety, more frequent in uh, measuring the status, and of course, uh, we need to do a clinic research. Thank you for your attention. Someone? Thank you for a nice presentation. So, uh, uh, I need to conclude in time just short. เอ่ออาจารย์สุเลมานะครับก็พูดเกี่ยวกับเรื่องภาวะทุกข์โภชนาในอาเซียนในแบบอาเซียนเราก็จะมีแบบทางขาดนะเพราะแบบเกินปั
คนเหล่านั้นก็คือบรรดาสตาฟอย่างพวกเราเนี่ยนะจะต้องคอยอัปเดตความรู้อัปเดตข้อมูลอยู่ตลอดเวลาด้วยนะครับเพื่อที่จะลงไปเทรนประชาชนชาวบ้านกัน any questions Could you repeat the strategy of Thailand again? The strategy for Mao of Thailand. Strategy for Thailand. So uh, as a uh, I have already uh, mentioned here the strategy in Thailand. Yes, uh, actually uh, we got uh, get more deep information about it. But uh, based on uh, the data, it's very low. Compared with other assets like this. And I forgot the name here. Maybe, Doctor, we could. Uh, 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 you know, guys, Doctor uh, Barafa, you can you can uh, have the call, yeah, for Thai. Because <laughs> you know, guys, than myself. Ah, uh, sorry, I'm not sure that I do better than him, but uh, from Jalalongkorn University Department of Nutrition and Dietetics. So, you want me to say in Thai or in English? Okay. Uh, in Thailand, we have so many. Uh, policies that happens, uh, we try to catch up with the increasing of the obesity in children, especially in Thailand. We have uh, the program called Dek Thai Gam Sai. Dek Thai Gam Sai is the program initiated from uh, Ministry of Public Health to actually to deal with the obesity uh, in children in Thailand, and also we have so many. Uh, how to say, so many policy campaigns that happen in Thailand, especially the Thai Gam Sai and the food fortification, like ion fortifications and zinc fortify and things like that happen in Thailand. So uh, many, many agencies, especially the Thai uh, Nutrition Association, the Thai Dietetics Association, and also the Ministry of Public Health are working together to initiate all the programs. Okay. I would like to share about the the tax for the junk food also. That is, we we should do like very strict in our country now, right? This is in case of in in economic issue and pesticides also buys of the tax for the pesticide or chemicals uh, tax also for this one that we have to do and we have to increase this kind of price more and more, I think that it will be reduced from uh, impact. Thank you so much.